Nearly everyone has grown up owning a Nintendo console and playing games like Mario Kart. But how exactly did Nintendo go from a small car company to dominating the gaming industry? How did the company, founded by Fusajiro Yamauchi in 1889, end up with a valuation of more than $85 billion? This is the story of Nintendo. Welcome to Planet Biz. Chapter 1 The Beginning Nintendo was founded by Fusajiro Yamauchi in September 1889 under the name of Nintendo Kopai. It's hard to imagine that the video game empire started off as nothing but a simple gaming card company. In its initial days, the company dealt with handmade playing cards and only a small number of employees. The reason behind Nintendo's success back in the 80s was the fact that Japan had banned all kinds of foreign and local card games. But Fusajiro decided to sell Hanafuda cards with colorful images of flowers that could be used to play many games. Nintendo's unique, hand-painted cards immediately became popular and the company started to make hefty profits with their sales. The company had to employ additional people to keep up with the demands of their customers. This led on to Nintendo creating Western-style playing cards around 1902, which were again received very well within the public. This made Nintendo the top-selling card company in all of Japan. In 1949, Nintendo went international and a year later, Fusajiro's great-grandson Hiroshi Yamauchi took over the operations. He went to the USA to expand the company's horizon and employed a great number of business tactics to grow the business locally and internationally. He struck a deal with Disney to print playing cards with Disney characters. This move proved to be great for the business because it opened up a whole new market for Nintendo. They were not just manufacturing cards for gamblers anymore, but their cards were also children's toys now. After that, Yamauchi attempted to dive into other industries as well, including a taxi service, hotels, and even launched Instant Ramen under Nintendo's name. But all of these ventures obviously failed, forcing the company to venture towards the electronic game industry. With the help of one of Nintendo's employees, Gunpei Yokoi, who was an engineer, the company manufactured electronic toys like the popular Bean Gun and the Ultra Hand in the 70s. But because of the saturation in the market, Nintendo had a hard time standing out in the gaming industry at first. Chapter 2 The Start of Electronic Gaming In 1972, Nintendo established family gaming venues which included the Laser Clay Shooting System, a light gun simulation game. But sadly, the company didn't really make enough profits from this venture and had to shut it down eventually. Just a year later, Nintendo managed to buy distribution rights for the Magnavox Odyssey, a commercial gaming console that ultimately led to Nintendo producing its own video games. The company released its first ever arcade game, Donkey Kong, in 1981 and that was the turning point for Nintendo in the gaming industry. The game, designed by Shigeru Miyamoto, saw immense success right after its release. After that, Nintendo began experimenting with their own gaming systems. The Nintendo Entertainment System was the first ever commercially sold console that Nintendo produced, and it sold over 60 million units. Around the same time, the company launched its most popular gaming series, Super Mario Bros. Mario! Mario! The game took the world by storm, and Mario became one of the most easily recognizable video game characters all over the world. Nintendo also launched games like The Legend of Zelda, which received just as much love from gaming enthusiasts. However, the company's next big break came in 1989 with the launch of the handheld Game Boy. Along with the Game Boy, Nintendo also launched their famous game, Tetris, which was sold with every version of the Game Boy. Tetris made Game Boy skyrocket, and Nintendo sold over 150 million units of the gaming system all over the world. Next was the Nintendo 64, which sold nearly 550,000 units and was also a success. Chapter 3 Nintendo Consoles 
The reason Nintendo was able to compete with other emerging console companies like Sega and Sony was because the company paid a great amount of attention to their gameplay. The company catered to family gaming, which is why Nintendo appealed to a greater market than its competitors. With games like Mario Kart, Nintendo was able to establish itself as one of the greatest video game manufacturers of all time. By 1994, the company had sold 1 billion game cartridges, outshining all other names in the industry against all odds. Satoru Iwata, Nintendo's fourth president, explained later, At Nintendo, we do not run from risk, we run to it. At the same time, Nintendo kept upgrading its gaming consoles with new additions in the Game Boy series along with consoles like Nintendo 64. With games like Pokemon and Super Mario 64, Nintendo was able to stay consistent with its popularity in the video game market. In fact, Pokemon was such a hit that it actually inspired a TV series, several movies, books, and toy lines. Mario and Pokemon combined skyrocketed Nintendo's sales and continued to be the company's best sellers. Chapter 4 Launching the Nintendo Wii and Nintendo Switch With the release of the PlayStation and Xbox consoles in the 2000s, people started to believe that Nintendo was lacking behind. But the company took everyone by surprise in 2006 by releasing the Nintendo Wii gaming system. Featuring wireless, motion-sensitive remote controllers and built-in Wi-Fi, the Wii completely sold out only a few hours after its release. Shigeru Miyamoto, Nintendo's most respected game developer, said, A game that keeps a smile on the player's face is the most wonderful thing. Nintendo's theme for 2006 will be Create New Fun. Spread the fun of games to everyone. To do this, we must return to the beginning to recapture the essence that made people who enjoy games even now enjoy them in the first place. What's so special about the Wii was that it allowed gamers to be physically interactive with the games they played. For example, users could swing the Wii remote like a sword while playing The Legend of Zelda and simulating a bowling motion while playing Wii Sports, which was unlike anything any other gaming console had done before. After the release of the Wii, Nintendo has remained one of the most profitable video game companies in the world. The brand decided to shake things up once again with the launch of the Nintendo Switch in 2018. The console was designed to work as a hybrid console that could be used as a home console connected to a television or as a portable gaming device. With the same motion-detecting feature of the Wii, the Nintendo Switch has dominated the handheld video game market. After the failure of Sony's PlayStation Portable, no one could have imagined handheld video games gaining traction again. But Nintendo clearly did it with the hybrid nature of the Switch, giving competition to smartphone gaming along with traditional console gaming. The Switch has sold 52 million units since its launch in 2017, beating the estimated sales of the Xbox One. More than 14 million Switch consoles were sold in less than 12 months, and seven Switch games sold more than 1 million copies each. Chapter 5 – The Future of Nintendo Currently, Nintendo has seen a rise in sales with the release of its popular simulation game Animal Crossing in 2020. The game has sold over 26 million copies, bringing Nintendo's profits up by 428%. As of now, the brand has no plans of launching a new console, but with the success of the Switch, there's no immediate need for a new launch either. With a yearly revenue of about $12 billion in 2020, it's safe to say that Nintendo has established itself as a force to be reckoned with in the gaming industry. As for the future, rumor has it that Nintendo is ready to update their Switch games and consoles with 4K technology to add to their gaming experience. Nintendo's success strategy has never relied on competition, the gaming brand has carved out its own niche by developing its gameplay experiences and focusing on making products that appeal to a worldwide audience. Which is why Nintendo has managed to compete with consoles like PlayStation and Xbox, despite lagging behind at places in terms of hardware. As Hiroshi Yamauchi once said, that's absolutely wrong. The gaming wars, they will never end. That's just how this business works. Nobody knows what tomorrow will bring. With the kind of inclusive gaming culture that Nintendo promotes, it's safe to predict that the brand will continue to dominate the video game industry for ages to come. That's a wrap for the story of Nintendo. Are you excited for the launch of Nintendo Switch 2 next year? Let us know in the comments below. For more inspiring business stories, make sure to subscribe to our channel. This is Planet Biz.